welcome to the Biz Communication Show. I'm your host, Bill Lampton, the Biz Communication Guy, welcoming you to a conversation with my guest. Every week, my guest is a recognized business communication expert. And by listening to our conversation, you will get tips and strategies that boost your business. And I get boot, uh, tips and strategies that boost my business by listening to these experts as well. Before I introduce our esteemed guest, I have a question to ask you. Did you witness the John Kennedy, President John Kennedy assassination, November 22nd, 1963? Did you witness that? And you'll say, no, I, I didn't even live in Dallas then. I wasn't in Dallas that day. Or if you lived in Dallas or you were in Dallas that day, you might say, oh, I was somewhere else in the city. No, I, I didn't witness it. Or you could also say, my gosh, that was almost 57 years ago. I wasn't even born then. What, what makes you think I would have seen the John F. Kennedy assassination? But you did see that November 22nd, 1963 assassination. Well, how can you say that, Bill? You saw it because of a 26 second video shot with a home camera by a dress manufacturer named Abe Zapruder, who was filming the limousine as it came through Dealey Plaza, close to the book depository building. And that eight millimeter home camera captured that majestic moment in history, which shook the world then and shakes us every time we see it. So yes, you witnessed the Kennedy assassination through the power of video. And today we have as our guest a video expert who's going to talk with us about the impact of video, both for our personal use and definitely for our business use as well. So I'm happy to introduce my longtime mentor, coach, friend, and role model, Terry Brock. I could take 20 minutes to introduce him, but we don't have that privilege. So I'll say that Terry Brock is more than a technology trends expert. He's a speaker, virtual presenter, interviewer, published author, and coach who packs everything he touches with solid business strategies meant to build relationships and improve the bottom line. And he presents his state-of-the-art ideas packed with fun, entertainment, and powerful applications. And if you've had the privilege of seeing and hearing Terry Brock speak, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Welcome, Terry Brock, to the Biz Communications Show. Bill, it is great to be back with you. Thanks for having me here. Always a pleasure and privilege and always a learning experience to host you. Terry, the opening that I just gave about the Kennedy assassination that we've all seen it, whether whatever our age, wherever we lived at the time, or even if we didn't live at the time, we've all seen it because of video. Talk to us for a minute about a recent video that became worldwide instantly. Well, those that are watching this uh, will know what we're talking about when we say that it really has profoundly impacted our world today. We saw someone who had not an eight millimeter camera, but a regular cell phone that is abundant today, all over the place. We all have them, of course. And this person was able to record brutal scenes that we saw with George Floyd as he was brutally killed, murdered by police hands there in Minneapolis. It was something that we saw, and you know, Bill, it struck me, this is profound. This is something that uh, really shakes us up because I remember as a kid growing up in the 60s, I watched shows like uh, Gunsmoke and Bonanza and uh, The Wild Wild West and others like that. We, we all would see did, actors. Yes. Yeah, we'd see actors that were shot and killed. Well, we knew it was acting. The difference on this one is, we knew it was real. And actually, I didn't know what was gonna happen. I just saw the video on a website and I started watching it thinking, well, I sure hope they let the guy up. Oh, so you didn't, didn't know the conclusion before you watched it. 
I did not know the conclusion. All I had seen was one of the first up there. And I saw it, I'm watching, I'm thinking, well, I sure hope they let him up. And then when they didn't, Bill, I was just uh, terrified. Uh, you know, they didn't say he was dead, but it looked like he was. And I'm thinking, I hope there's some chance. And then found out, no, he was killed. And it really has shaken us up. And I think it shows the impact of a lot of things coming together. Cameras, cell phones can be a source of good in the midst of the tragedy, in the midst of all that's happening. Because if we have everyone equipped with a ability to record and to do that video, I think we're going to see a different society. It's kind of like, oh, oh, wait a minute, somebody might be watching me. I better not do this. And it's going to impose a lot of uh, concern and second thoughts on the part of others who might not have had that before. I think when we look at others that are killed right now, we have to step back and the, the cynical journalist in me says, really, the police said such and such happened? Is that what really happened there or not? And There's one that's thing why I, I have constantly you. say, Terry, when I'm providing speech coaching, as you do, one thing I constantly say, and I say it with a smile, but it is true, the camera does not lie. <laughs> and when, I, I guess on a lighter note, as you know, I'm a lifelong would-be golfer. I've taken uh, many, many lessons, uh, worn out quite a few professionals doing that. <laughs> and what really changed for me was when golf professionals got to the point where they could take a video of my swing and the things that pros have been telling me for years, I might not believe or say, oh, they're exaggerating, but by golly, when I saw it on video, the pro was right. It was incontestable evidence. Now let's, let's shift. We, we certainly know from these two incredible incidents, historic incidents, we certainly know the power of video. You, Terry, teach us how to apply video to business. Talk with us some, please, about the, because we do have this, this uh, access to this magical way of communicating with people, because we have that, how can we use it to tell people what we do, to interest them in what we do, and even persuade them to become our clients and customers? Well, I think we can look at video as a tool that comes very close to actually being there, particularly today, because we've got great video quality, we've got great audio quality, and we've got the bandwidth that's there. But I think even more than all of that, those things are good, is a fourth element that's come into play now very recently, and that is psychological acceptance of video for meetings, psychological acceptance of video for training. You and I both know the importance of uh, constantly learning and, and getting trained. Well, now there's an abundance of information. If you want to learn about a given topic, there's probably something somewhere out there. And this is a great way to generate business by educating and helping people. Something, Bill, you've been doing for years. As a communicator, you're a person who knows very well how to speak on the platform. Give you a microphone, put people in front of you, they listen to what you're saying. But you also can communicate on video. You've been doing that so well. And looking into the camera, knowing what to do, making sure you got the right microphone. I like your snowball microphone you're using there. That's right. And I got the Yeti microphone here, same company, but there it is. <laughs> you wanna make sure you have the right thing and your lighting, it's good. Your background, that they look good. You have done that very well, but you also learn how to speak eloquently and teach others how to do that and how to communicate very well on camera. That's important. And now we've got opportunities as never before because we can take our video and reach around the world. It's pretty amazing to be alive today. Well, you, you reached around the world even before video because the last I heard you had spoken and directed seminars and provided coaching in 35 to 40 countries and those countries- yeah, 44 now and counting. 44 <laughs> and counting. Well, You've got about 150 to go, and I, <laughs> I, I wouldn't be too surprised if Terry Brock does that. It, it, one of the things that has happened recently, as we all know, Terry, you and I both have had decades of speaking to live audiences, directing seminars for live audiences, coaching people face to face. All of a sudden, circumstances blocked us from doing that. Fortunately, 
you and I are not the only ones who made a shift in the way we present information because of Zoom, which we're using now, Skype, which you became a leader in years ago because of even something uh, like telephone conversations. We can have still the opportunity to train, to educate, to coach without being there. And the fortunate thing is our potential clients and customers and organizations and associations and conferences, they're, they're, they're making that adjustment as well. So thank heaven for the internet because we're not cut off. We just had to make that radical change. But in my judgment, it's been done much more seamlessly than I would have predicted. How about you? Yeah, I think so. I think as we learn the tools, we get used to this medium, we realize what we can do with video that you cannot do in person. Being able to bring in other examples, being able to do more. Matter of fact, in preparation for this, I want to show you a little bit. If it's all right with you, I wanted to share a couple little things that we can do when we're looking at something. I can say, well, look here, there's websites out there that do all kinds of marvelous little things, and we can move around here like this or come over here and a wonderful website here. I th recommend you check this out. It's called the Biz Communication Guy. I've a heard guy of that, that guy. It's a lot like you, Bill. Yeah. And, uh, can see there's a lot there, but think about the possibilities for this. I can take this and by me moving around, you see, I keep attention that way because notice what's happening. Often with video, too often people use the, ter they become the terrible B word, boring, and you're not going to get that. But if I'm right here like this and I move over here, your eyes are tracking that. Our brains are geared from, uh oh, are we back here on the Serengeti? And is that a saber tooth tiger over there? Or is that this over there? I need to be alert here. And when things are moving around, we can do a lot. But then I can do a whole lot more too with just the right technology. I can say, hey, this guy, Bill Lampton, he is one incredible guy. And by pressing a button and putting something in there, we let people know he is the communication specialist. Your check so is in the mail. Things. Your check What's is that? in the mail. Your check is in the mail. <laughs> oh, it is. well, no need for that. And I can say, this guy, let me tell you about Bill Lapton. He is <laughs> one incredible guy. He's wonderful. And you see, I'm focusing on that. And then I can come over here, do it again. And now I've got it in another place. So these are just a few things that you can do in today's world. But it's important to learn the technology. Learn what it is, it, like you did, Bill. You have invested the time, the money, the energy to learn how to make video work and take the skills you have speaking. Your training was with microphones and learning how to connect with people, the soft skills of training and a real PhD, you know, out of the, then doing that and teaching at the college level. You've done that so brilliantly, so well, but also you then stretched it over into video and helping your clients with it today. Bill, congratulations on what you have done. Well, you were and remain one of, as I mentioned at the outset, one of my vital mentors and coaches. You, you, Terry, were along with my great friend, Mike Stewart and a few others. Yeah, wonderful guy. Yes, you guys saw the potential for technology. And I remember, as you do, how complicated it was at first. Now, one thing I will say to people who are wondering, gee, uh, could I possibly produce videos? I would say to you that a dozen years ago, you might be right in saying it's so complicated I can't learn it. Terry, I'm the most innately non-techy guy you ever met. I was in management for 22 years. I had somebody to delegate everything to him. When this thing called computers came along, I delegated all that stuff, didn't think I could learn it. Then all of a sudden, as an entrepreneur, I had nobody to delegate to. So what did I do? I turned to you and to Mike Stewart. And I remember very well going to a seminar that Mike directed in Atlanta that lasted a day and a half. I took a page full of notes, and that was on how to produce videos. I had an 18-point checklist that I had to follow once I had shot it on my regular camera, 18 points to get it into the computer. You may remember those complicated days. Oh, tell, yeah. us, tell us now how, how much simpler and how much more cost-effective it is. This is important for our listeners and viewers to know. 
if you say, I can't learn it or I can't afford it, it's simply because somebody has not given you the right information. So talk to us about that, please, Terry. Yeah, it's remarkable that it's so much easier today. We can do it. You do need some instruction. It's kind of like I use the example often in teaching technology. I said, if I could get my time machine going and I'm going to get it, it's big enough, I'm going to put a car in there and I'm going to go back in time to see one of my heroes, Sir Isaac Newton. And now he was a really smart guy. A smart old boy did a whole lot of good things. But if I said, okay, Sir Isaac, here we go, assuming that our English would be understandable to each other. Say, here's the thing I'm going to give you. It's called a car. It's uh, over here. It's locked up. Here are the keys. Have a good time. Sir Isaac Newton wouldn't know what to do with it. It doesn't mean he's stupid. It's just mean he is, and here's a key word, ignorant. And ignorant means lack of knowledge. It doesn't mean you're stupid. It means you don't know how to do it. But I dare say, in my hypothetical of my time machine and going back, if I could spend half hour, hour with Sir Isaac Newton, I could show him how to unlock the car with this thing called a key. I could show him how to per step on the gas, how to turn it on, how to move around a little bit. We'd find a place that we could safely drive and do that. He could learn. And so my point is, the technology of video today has become far more elaborate on one hand, but that's underneath the hood, if you will, to mix some metaphors here. It's now designed so that you can do it with press of a button. That little uh, thing that I went through there, showing your picture and the scrolling and all that, those are really simple. All I'm doing is pressing a button on a device that I set it up beforehand. And so here's a way business leaders can do it. You get someone that can do that for you behind the scenes and then they show you which button to press and when. And that way you can do it. And also learn for, for the right people, learn how to do it. It's not that difficult. With a little bit of time, I gave you 30 minutes to an hour or so, you would figure out how to do what I just did with the tools I'm using here, like Ecamm is one I'm using for that. I'm also using a tool called Stream Deck. And so those are tools that are available. Once you get those, then you can start learning how to do it. And so, Bill, you're right. The possibilities are enormous. It's if we're willing to invest the time, the money, and the energy to learn how to use it. And I would add to that what I've already hinted at, Terry, and that is be sure to get a mentor. I mean, go back to your Isaac Newton deal. With just uh, an hour with him, you could have uh, Isaac buzzing down the, the interstate, you know? Uh, yeah, Isaac I think wouldn't so. have figured it out on his own. I, I will also say that many times some of us try to learn something just by reading the instructions. My quip on that is, and I'm really serious, I believe instructions were written for other people who write instructions. <laughs> <laughs> I have to agree with you. I've re you've read some of the same instruction manuals I have then. <laughs> uh, that's right. I hope you didn't write any that I've read. I don't think so. <laughs> because... Uh, it, if you get the right person to walk you through the steps and you might say, well, that will cost me something, but guess what? It will cost you plenty. If you don't do it, it will cost opportunities for showcasing your services, showcasing your products, uh, showcasing testimonials from people. Terry, can you think of, of others uh, advantages and those I just mentioned? There are others, of course. Yeah, I think another big one is not just the training and the education, but also in times like this particularly and in many other ways, it's a great way for collaboration, for us to connect with other people, to be there. Right now, as we're recording this, many people are confined to their home. They're under quarantine. Um, they're under lockdown, maybe some by choice, and that could be a very good thing in many cases. But we still want to reach out to people. And I think from a business point of view, businesses now are realizing, hey, we can do a lot of business using a tool like Zoom that we're using here or some others. Taking a salesperson from Atlanta, Georgia or Orlando, where I am, sending them out to, say, Seattle or Los Angeles to see a client for an hour, hour and a half is really a lot of resources for something that you could probably do in many cases over Zoom. So There's that instead thing I read on that recently, out and back, you just do it right here over Zoom. That's right. Pardon my interruption. I read something on that recently, Terry, an article where a salesperson said the advantage of being able to present by Zoom instead of presenting in person, if you present in person and you have given them a handout, 
they might look to one thing that might look at the bottom line, the cost that's on the handout, and, and they won't listen to your presentation. You won't, if you're giving a, a seminar or a webinar, or if you're giving a proposal over video, such as the way we're doing now, uh, you probably will not mention price until the end of it. So I, I thought that was an unusual twist, but just one more advantage that this new way of communicating with with each other even for sales can can work and work well oh yeah absolutely you're in control of that you can do a lot with video that you can't do as easily in person another example would be when you're talking about a topic you might be presenting to a group of people one person presenting to another and then you want to have a particular subject that is really important to that group and you think you know there's another person who really knows this. Dr. Mary Smith over in New York, you just with a few clicks of the button can get hold of Dr. Mary Smith, bring her on. And then, oh, uh, Dr. Jane Johnson might be out in Los Angeles and has a different view on that topic, but very relevant. Well, you could bring both of them in and then be able to moderate a discussion on that. The capabilities with video are enormous. Now, of course, you could do that bringing everyone into one place for a meeting. We've done that for years, but there are a lot more time, money, and energy involved in that. I think right now we're seeing a major inflection point in business and acceptance of video. And hey, it's pretty cool. I like seeing what's going on now. Fortunately, you were in on that a long time before this. I was as well. But this doesn't mean those who are not can't get on the, the bus that we're on. There's, there's plenty of room. And again, I want to reemphasize what we've covered, that video has changed history. We have seen that. Video has changed behavior. We have seen that. And also, as Terry and I are underscoring, video can greatly boost your business. And before I ask Terry for a closing comment, I want to thank you for those visuals that you showed us, Terry. And one thing I've often heard as a suggestion is, you may not even want to uh, cut up the sound, but watch some television commercials and notice how they have the movement. They have the change of scene. They don't go very long focusing on a talking head. If the talking head is still there, there will be these other pictures around and other sounds. So uh, variety is important, movement's important. Uh, it was a wonderful illustration that you gave us there. Terry, as we wind this up, thinking of the power of video to boost our business, what's your closing thought? Video is a powerful tool for connecting with people. And that's what it's really all about. It's human to human connection that matters most. Video is the closest we've come to being there without physically being there. And the beauty of it is we've got such good communication today. The tools, the audio is better. The video is better. We can often do high definition video as well as even 4K. And so that way you've got an opportunity to connect with people. It's a great business tool because it's an ability to connect with other people. And I encourage you to embrace it. If you need some help, that's fine. There are people that can help you on that. You want to learn how to do it. Just as if you wanted to become a surgeon, you could do it given the right amount of time, instruction, and help. You can do that, whatever you might want. And so find out what it is that you need to do, you know, how you need to communicate, and I would say make it happen. Terry, I know people will want to contact you, so please give us your contact information. You're a wonderful resource for teaching video and all forms of business communication. Well, thank you, Bill. Uh, best way to get in touch with me and all the social media channels and uh, email, everything we've got, kind of in one place is at the website. My website is terrybrock.com. And for those of you listening, that's spelled T-E-R-R-Y. And Brock is spelled the right way, B-R-O-C-K. So terrybrock.com. And I'd love to see uh, how you are using technology, what you're doing. If you've got any questions or I can help you, please let me know. Terry Brock is a magnificent resource. That's why I wanted to share a conversation with him today and give all of us the opportunity to hear some of his gems of wisdom. Terry, since you've given your con uh, contact information, 
I'm delighted to give mine, Bill Lampton, the biz communication guy. So logically, my website is biz, B-I-Z, bizcommunicationguy.com. Invite you to check my services there for leaders and for corporations. Give me a call, talk to me about your communication challenges, and we'll talk about how we can resolve them. Terry, thank you so much again. Thank you to those of us who joined us on video and on the podcast. Be with us again next week for another edition of The Biz Communication Show. I'm your host, Bill Lampton.